wastewater treatment has been a fundamental system since the dawn of civilization where it was only for prevention of flood and also other sewage problem. Nowadays, it has been developed and researched to gain more benefits, which is one of the example, the microwave fuel cell, which utilizing sago wastewater as the feed for the fuel and producing electricity as the byproduct. There are two objectives of this project. And the first one is to introduce an environmentally friendly approach to electrical generation. And the second is to reduce the accumulation of sago mill waste into general wastewater treatment facilities through proper waste management. Microbial fuel cell or MFC is the most suitable type of fuel cell to treat sago mill wastewater. Wastewater effluent from the sago mill can be utilized as the main source of energy and also a suitable substrate for bioremediation. The MFC technology utilizes the energy produced from the microorganisms' metabolisms such as ATP, electron, and also proton, which can be used to generate bioelectricity. MFC can provide alternative power, uh, which is reliable, clean, efficient, renewable, and also no toxic byproduct, while in the same time treating the wastewater. In the basic process of MFC, microorganisms are placed inside the anodic chamber where they can metabolize organic compounds found in the wastewater such as glucose. This will produce electron and proton which can be transferred into the cathodic chamber through an external circuit and also through an, uh, a membrane called proton action membrane. The transferred electrons and proton will be consumed through a reduction reaction usually by soluble electron acceptor such as the oxygen. The electrical power will be harnessed by placing a load between the two electrode compartments. The oxygen reduction reaction ORR, will be catalyzed using platinum due to its catalytic capabilities. The end product will be a clean water and also bioelectricity which indicates the wastewater is already treated. These are the main components of MFC. First is the chamber of the MFC. The design used will be a dual chamber MFC with, with rectangular design, uh, this can save the cost due to its easy design as, and also easy construction. The material used is plexiglass due to its durability and also chemical stability. The electrodes uh, should have good conductivity and also high total surface area while in the same time it saves budget. Uh, the most, most common use is carbon based material. So uh, the electrode used in this MFC is a graphite brush. Next is the catalyst. In the cathodic chamber, uh, the, the, the most common use uh, catalyst is platinum due to its efficiency and also it does have high total surface area which can improve the electron transport and also catalyze the reaction inside the uh, cathodic chamber. Next is the substrate use. The substrate use is wastewater which contains uh, glucose uh, which can be metabolized by the microorganisms that to be used. The electron acceptor in this MFC will be oxygen uh, due to its enhanced potential, avail availability and also sustainability. This will be pro provided by aeration device inside the uh, cathodic chamber. Next is the microorganisms. Uh, the microorganisms to be used should be of mixed culture due to its better effect. Uh, uh, the microorganisms to be used are geobacter metalli reducens and also Shewanella putrefacients uh, due to its high rate of transport which can impact positively in the fuel cell. Finally is the proton action membrane. Uh, the membrane should, able, should be able to separate both chamber and also allow proton transfer. The material to be used is nafion polyvinyl borosilicate which is cheaper uh, and also is it does have its uh, good properties of nafion. There are five advantages and disadvantages respectively for our microbial fuel cell and we are proud to say that our fuel cell has supplied most of the green, green chemistry principle in waste, waste management and it is eco-friendly since most of the process is done biologically and one of our concern is the formation of sedimentation and carbon dioxide as the byproduct which has been which has been taken into account 
where we will be doing modification on it. And I will be presenting on the modifications and setup of the MFC. So for the modifications, there are three aspects to consider. The first is the use of a biocatalyst to substitute the platinum catalyst, which is not only expensive, but um, isn't easily recoverable. Uh, and also not environmentally friendly, therefore the utilization of biochar. The second is the utilization of a photobioreactor whereby to get the carbon dioxide emission from the anodic chamber. Uh, moving on to the use of the sedimentation from the MFC, this will allow for it to be utilized and upcycled into uh, composting which will then allow it to integrate back into the environment as fertilizer. So how does fuel cell solve environmental pollution? Using fossil fuels to generate electricity will release greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution, as well as the exploitation to retrieve coal and natural gas will lead to land degradation, ocean acidification, and water pollution. So using fuel cells as a method to generate electricity will provide a cleaner and environmental friendly approach to generate electricity since the byproducts of fuel cell treatment, wastewater treatment are water and heat, where the heat is used to generate electricity and the carbon dioxide produced from the oxidation of glucose in this process will be converted into methane, which can be used as biofuel and the hydrogen ions is used as an additional source for the generation of electricity. There's also no possibilities of water pollution since the sago waste will not end up in general wastewater treatment facilities and clean water supply will be released to the public after the whole process is done. I, Mohamed Irfan Ashraf Ismail, will be explaining about the second part of our outcomes for the microbial fuel cell, which is the correlation of principles of green chemistry to the fuel cell, whereby the microbial fuel cell actually applies eight of the 12 principles of green chemistry, where the first principle being that of waste protection relates to the principle of synthesis of less hazardous chemicals and the potential use of renewable feedstock, where the products of microbial fuel cell being that of carbon dioxide gas and water, which are both harmless compounds in nature and are generally noted to be used in industrial processes. Another principle of green chemistry, reduced derivatives, can be applied to the microbial fuel cell due to the redox reaction within the fuel cell that does not have many steps to form the intended product, which reduces the possibility of waste formation. The microbial fuel cell also follows the principle of using a catalyst in a chemical reaction, whereby this fuel cell bacteria are used as a biocatalyst to help carry out the redox reaction more efficiently. The principle of design for degradation within the microbial fuel cell is that with the products of water, it can be released back into nature with little to no harm, while carbon dioxide can be used as feedstock for a chemical reaction uh, that produces methane gas. The microbial fuel cell is then related with the principle of real-time analysis for pollution where weekly checks and monthly audits will be done to ensure that the fuel cell is able to perform at its highest potential. Lastly, the principle of safer chemistry for pre accident prevention of which that from the weekly checks and monthly audits, it provides uh, information whether the, there are significant problems of the microbial fuel cell which then can be acted upon to make the fuel cell as safe as possible when managing it. For the budget, there are a list of items that make up an MFC station or a microbial fuel, st fuel cell station totaling up to 5,410 ringgit and 60 cents as shown on the slide. As for the timeline, it will take about 5 to 8 months until the full implementation of the fuel cell. And this is because one to three months is given for the obtaining of supplies since we are importing our raw materials from Indonesia, China, and Japan. Whereas the construction period takes three months where it doesn't exactly involve construction, but there's more installation of the cathodes and anodes and as well as the wiring process. And for the testing period, it takes two months since we will conduct a series of trials and errors to see which wastewater treatment process is more efficient and 
we will also check how the maintenance works. And when all is said and done, the full implementation of the fuel cell will be open for the public. Thank you very much for watching.